Today we're looking at battery health on battery EVs. But we're not talking about the voltage or the current, we're talking about the resistance to the outside world. We're going to pressure test an EV battery. First thing to do is cover up any possible areas of air leak. What we'll do is we'll use gaffer tape or uh, ducting tape. We need also to cover up these air vents to stop them leaking so that we can then pressure test the rest of the battery. As long as the tape seals properly, we have no problem. This will take several pieces of tape. Make sure it seals properly. Okay. okay, what we could do is block these up using the tape, but as it happens, we just happen to have the OEM method for this particular battery, which is a Hyundai. It's always a good idea to put a little bit of Vaseline around the rubbers so that the rubbers don't tear, and then that block just slides in like that. Same with this one, that's good enough. They're, they're a good seal, they're manufactured for the job. Now we move on to the kit. Okay, what we've got to do now is select the correct connector for this battery. In the kit, we have the Nissan connector. Well, that's a screw fitting, so it's not that. Jaguar, Jaguar I-Pace. Um, that's also used for pre-testing the system. And this is the one we want, Hyundai Kona. Bit of lubrication, bit of Vaseline on the seal so it doesn't tear the seal. In it goes. Push fit. It locks on under here. That's it. Now we need to assemble the kit and do a pressure test. So if we pull the kit out the box, close the valve, pull that out of there, switch it on. Currently it's reading zero, zero because it's reading from uh, atmospheric pressure. Now you can see it's gone up, and now we leave it alone. Don't touch it, because the heat from your hand will raise the pressure. Just leave it be and let it settle. Before we start pumping, what we will need to do is find out what the pressure is that we should be pumping to. In the uh, instructions we've listed for this particular battery, which is 20 to 25 millibars. We don't want to go beyond 25 millibar. You will see fluctuations as I'm pumping. That's due to just uh, seeing the pressure wave and it's nothing to be concerned about. If we have a leak, you may be lucky enough to hear it but you certainly won't be able to make the pressure. If you don't have a leak, it's going to take three to four minutes to pump up the pressure. So you pump up nice and slowly, not too fast, and you don't exceed the maximum pressure. Okay, now what we need to do is move on with a pressure test. So here we go. Open up the tap and start pumping. After you've done a good few pumps, bearing in mind it can take up to four minutes to raise the pressure on a good battery. After you've done a number, stop, let it stabilise and see what's happened. This is dropping off almost instantly, it's not holding pressure, we have a leak. If I go a bit more, again, it may be anybody working with you might be able to hear where it's coming from. In this case, the leak is quite high. Stop, wait. Yeah, it's creeping down too fast. So we have a leak. You now need to find the leak. Chances are it will be this seal. You can check where you've sealed just to make sure none of those are leaking, but the most likely candidate is this seal, or on this battery, 
the seal underneath. Having checked the seals, repaired the, the, the damage, we've now got a, a nicely sealed battery. We can then redo the, the test. What we're looking for is to get the pressure to around 25 millibar, no more. Um, and we're looking for a, a drop of no more than five millibar over two minutes. Now what we've got here is a reading of 22.4 millibar. It's dropping off slowly, but very slowly. Hopefully it will stabilize around 22 and that'll be fine. So we don't need to do any more, we just wait those two minutes. Laser 8467, the perfect way of making sure there's no leaks in your battery.